When most people hear about MDMA, they think about partying or raving. But recently, MDMA has been in the news for other reasons. In 2017, MDMA was granted breakthrough therapy status for its use in treatment-resistant post-traumatic stress disorder, a condition with limited treatment options. However, ahead of the FDA's decision for its approval in August 2024, the advisory committee has voted against MDMA-assisted therapy, which could reduce the chance of its approval. While phase 3 clinical trials have been completed, research into new analogues of MDMA has been ongoing. A new research paper, published just two weeks after the advisory committee's meeting, has reported new bioisosteric analogues of MDMA, which may have improved safety and reduced side effects. Bioisosteric analogues are molecules where a functional group has been replaced with one that has similar steric or electronic characteristics. This is done to improve pharmacokinetic properties while retaining or improving potency at the desired target. For example, in a previous video, we saw how the molecule Cubane acts as a bioisoster of phenyl rings in known pharmaceuticals, improving metabolic stability and solubility. For MDMA, the major metabolite in humans results from the metabolism of the methylene dioxy ring by cytochrome P450 enzymes. The ring is opened for a carbene intermediate to form a catechol species, which can go on to react further. This creates two problems. Firstly, MDMA's metabolites have been the proposed cause of the potential neurotoxicity associated with its use. Secondly, MDMA and its metabolites are cytochrome P450 inhibitors, which can lead to drug-drug interactions. This team of researchers looked at using bioisosteric analogues of the methylene dioxy phenyl ring to address these issues. They created three different benzodiazole analogues, where the free position is substituted with either oxygen, sulfur or selenium. To make these molecules, a simple synthesis of only two steps was used. They started with the relevant benzodiazole, substituted in the 5 position with a bromine substituent. They used this in a modified HEC reaction, in which isoprenyl acetate is reacted with tributyl timofoxide and a palladium catalytic system. In this reaction, tributyl timofoxide first activates the isoprenyl acetate, turning it into a more effective nucleophile. A standard HEC reaction can then occur, with hydrolysis of the enol leading to the ketone product. A reductive amination with methylamine and sodium trisotoxy borohydride leads to the final product. There is strong evidence that MDMA exhibits the majority of its effects through interactions with the monoamine transporters, of which there are three major types. Serotonin, dopamine and norepinephrine. The role of these proteins is to transfer these neurotransmitters across membranes regulating intra- and extracellular levels of these free key neurotransmitters. More specifically, they are primarily involved in the reuptake of these molecules from outside neurons, which is a vital part of neurotransmission and has a huge impact on the body. Due to this, they are the target of many pharmaceutical compounds, as well as recreational drugs. MDMA acts as a substrate of these proteins, inhibiting the reuptake of these neurotransmitters. In addition to this, MDMA also stimulates the release of these neurotransmitters by reversing the flow of these molecules through their transporters. These two effects lead to increased extracellular levels of these neurotransmitters, which can then go on to bind to their relevant receptors and alter the body and mind. These new analogues were tested in cells expressing these transporters to compare their activity to MDMA. These tests showed that MDMA and these analogues were all low micromolar inhibitors of each transporter, showing that these changes retain activity at these key receptors. Further tests were used to show that these analogues also stimulate the release of these neurotransmitters. To complement this data, the researchers carried out molecular docking simulations to see how the binding of these analogues compared to MDMA. They started with the docking of these molecules to the serotonin monoamine transporter, and as expected, similar interactions are observed. 
In this case, the positively charged amino group interacts via hydrogen bonds with the aspartate 98 and the serine 438 residues. When looking at the dopamine transporter, the same interactions are conserved with respect to MDMA. However, this time, additional aromatic stacking interactions can be formed between the aromatic diazole ring and the tyrosine 156 residue. While MDMA primarily acts on monoamine transporters, it also has interactions at a subtype of serotonin receptor. These interactions are thought to cause some of the side effects associated with MDMA use. Its weak binding at the 5-HT2A receptor is believed to cause its small hallucinogenic effects, while its activity at the 5-HT2B receptor is thought to cause the cardiotoxicity issues associated with its use. Its effects at the 5-HT2C receptor appear only to decrease appetite. The 5-HT receptors are G-coupled protein receptors. To test the activity of these analogues, the researchers use an interesting technique called bioluminescence resonance energy transfer. In this assay, a decrease in light emitted from the acceptor protein is observed when the beta subunit is released. This is due to an increase in distance between the two proteins, which reduces the energy transfer. This only occurs when the receptor protein is activated through the binding of a molecule, so it can be used to measure the interaction between the analogues and the receptor. This assay revealed that all three of these analogues were approximately tenfold less potent at these receptors than MDMA, which could lead to reduced side effects. Finally, tests were carried out to see if the bioisostate replacements of the methylene dioxy ring stop metabolism at this position. The researchers used an in vitro system to replicate metabolism by the liver. They did this by using human liver microsomes combined with cytosol. The compounds were then incubated in this environment and the metabolites were identified using high-resolution mass spectrometry. N-demethylation was the only common metabolite between MDMA and the analogues tested. N-hydroxylation also occurred for the benzodiazole analogues. Importantly, these analogues do not form any catechol-like intermediates like MDMA. This data shows similar clearance levels for OMDA and SEDMA when compared to MDMA. However, the sulfur analogue had a faster clearance for reasons that are not completely clear. This study was the first of its kind to look at novel bioisosteric replacements of the methylene dioxy ring. These bioisosteric replacements appear to have a similar effect to MDMA on the monoamine transporters, but a reduced effect at the 5-HT2 receptors. This change, as well as the improved metabolism of these compounds, could reduce the side effects and improve the safety of these molecules compared to MDMA. The researchers comment that this data justifies more studies around these compounds, particularly behavioural studies in rodents, and further studies on the metabolites of these analogues. Let me know what you think about these new molecules and the FDA's upcoming decision. If you're interested in learning more about bioisosteres, check out this video where I discuss the use of cubane in known pharmaceuticals and drugs.